Okay, so now we're going to incorporate this into an exercise that is a very common exercise in the Taiji world, but um, lots of variations on this one. And, I, and it depends on what you're emphasizing. Uh, uh, what you're emphasizing will determine, you know, how you do it. But I ask you to do this exercise, even if you've done something similar to it thousands of times, to approach this with a uh, from a novel perspective, from a from a perspective that you uh, fresh eyes, because this is a really a, an important exercise, and it's a. Uh, this allows us to approach the shoulders from a substantial aspect and allows us to then incorporate the insubstantial as well. And by substantial, I'm talking about the actual physical, mechanical movements and which support the insubstantial or the expression of energy through the, through the shoulders. But you keep remembering to lift from that clavicular notch, lifting, reaching from the crown of the head. So you're not pushing. You are, there's a sense you're being pulled. You're reaching. Actually, reaching is a better term rather than being pulled. You're reaching with the, with the clavicular notch. You're reaching upward or reaching upward with the crown. So we're going to the exercise. You'll, it'll look very familiar to a lot of you. And that is, that is this one. We're going to break it down into really its component parts. But the, the basic idea is this one. You're, you're, you're going like this, OK? Something that many of us have done a variation of this for decades, OK? And what I'd like you to do is forget all that and just bear with me. and and actually really feel into this because we're going to incorporate a number of the different aspects of what I uh, what I've been talking about here for you know these all these different classes and so first before you get the arms involved at all you want to get a sense of being able to get sun kwa so remember the hip thing you want to get your you want to relax your lower back and drop your way lu, drop your tailbone so that your, your pelvis is level and you can make that turn. Okay. And just like the shoulders, if you if you just arch your back a little bit so that the pelvis is tilting forward and then try turning, say in your into your right leg, and notice how it how difficult it is to make that turn, how difficult it is to release the quad. Whereas if you drop your, your tailbone, you relax your lower back, and then you make that turn, it becomes quite effortless. So keeping that in mind as we're doing this. So we're going to feel the ball of the right foot and set the knee and then spiral down to the right. So you're sinking into that. And then you're gonna feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right and then turn. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and then turn. Feel the ball of the left foot, spiral down to the right, turn. So this is very similar to the quad exercise we've been doing for months now. You just keep that going. So notice what I am not doing. And this is something that is radically different from the way this exercise is, is usually taught. And I'll show you what I mean. What usually uh, you'll encounter, often you'll encounter, if not usually, is the idea you're sinking down and then you're coming up and then sinking down and then coming up and you go doing this kind of thing, right? There's, and there's this parabola that gets, that gets created there where you're floating here. And so it'll look like 
oh, like this, and you're coming up and then down and up. And we don't want to do that. Okay, that's a different exercise. This one is spiral down, feel the ball spiral to the right and then turn. So notice I'm not launching myself upward because what that does is it uproots me. I want to spiral and turn, spiral and turn, spiral and turn. So, and there's always a sense of going down but never a sense of pushing away from the earth. There's always a sense of going in and then, oh, you're, you're gonna turn. And there's a, a number of variations we can do with, the, with this motion, but I wanna keep it very simple right now. And that is spiral down, right? You're sinking in, you feel the ball, the left foot, and then turn, feel the ball, the right foot, and spiral down and turn, and spiral down and turn. So there's always this a very fluid motion, and it kind of looks like a a uh, uh, like a Mobius strip or something. It's like you're, and there's never a point where you're you're floating. Never a point where you're not rooted with this, and this is the key to doing this. The other thing that we're doing here when I'm spiraling down, notice that my butt doesn't go past my, the side of my foot, right? I spiral down and turn, my butt doesn't go outside, outside of that. So I'm never going like that. I'm never rocking back and forth like this. I'm spiraling down, turning, boom. And you're getting this kind of, your body's doing like a figure eight, you know, with the, your hips are do, doing this figure eight kind of thing. So uh, that's that's the first part there. So then what we want to do now is we spiral down to the to the right and then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and we're going to turn. And as we turn the right hand comes up being, you're reaching with the wrist. So you're reaching with the wrist. So it looks like, boom, you're reaching with the wrist. And this is very different than the way it's taught also a lot of times. A lot of, a lot of times you'll see that people reach from the shoulder. They come up like that and they're extending from the shoulder. And what this exercise is, is doing the way I'm teaching it now is to get away from that. To just as we don't want to bob up and down, we don't want to come up with the arm reaching from the shoulder. We want to get out of the habit of doing that so that when we're coming coming up, it's reaching. Notice how the the arm is very relaxed and it comes up like this. You're reaching with the wrist and then you feel the ball of the right foot spiral down to the left and then you, you're coming out, boom, going this way. So you're, you're going like this, boom. You're, the arm will come up, but it's not coming up from the shoulder. It's coming up from the wrist. Okay, so you get this very fluid kind of motion. And then when it comes down, Elbow first, wrist follows, right? Boom. So you're getting, so just get, just do it with the right arm for now. Just, you're spiraling, you're spiraling down to the, and the left leg is spiraling down and then turning and the arm comes down, wrist reaches and then feel the ball to the right, spiral down to the left and then boom, you're coming like that, right? Doing the left hand, you're, you're, uh, boom, like this. You reach with the wrist, coming elbow, wrist. Elbow, wrist, boom, boom. So you're getting, you're getting this kind of action going on that it's, the turn 
is what's driving that elbow out, the wrist out, boom. So, okay. So, the when we get into the you, you're spiraling down to the left, and the arms come down, your elbows come down, wrists come down, the right hand comes in front of the body, the left hand comes behind the body. So you get this kind of kind of thing. You're you're bending from here and they're going spiraling down to the left, right hand comes up, left hand comes behind you. And then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and then coming up, you're reaching with the wrist, both wrists opening. Notice that the elbows are lower than the wrists. Notice, notice how relaxed your arm is. And, but at the same time, if you were to test this and you were to, to have someone pushing on your arms, you would find that you have a tremendous amount of tensile strength there. The tensegrity of the structure animated by the energy creates a powerful gin. The other quality here is you don't want the arms in this point to go behind you. So notice that, so when like arms come up like this, notice that the hand is in front of the shoulder. What I don't want to do is this. I don't want to go behind me, right? I want to, oh, you know, my arms come up and you're boom. So you're spiral down, turn, boom. You're re reaching with the wrists, floating, boom. Arms are very, very relaxed yet incredibly powerful at the same time. Why? Because you've got chin and you are, when you're here, you're opening, opening the shoulders, opening the chest, making that connection all the way out. You're, you're an eagle. You know, you're very powerful. Mm. So you'll notice that I just changed that a little bit. I, you, can, you can do it this way where you're coming down into one leg or you can do it with either leg. So when I said before, there's a variation, it, it, both are, are necessary, both are valuable. So you can do it that way, or you can spiral down and load up the other leg. So what we're doing here is really feeling the shoulders, not as something to get rid of, not just as something to relax, they are participants in this, but they are participants in a sense of way, wu way, doing based in non-doing. So the power that they give to this motion is in a sense of allowing the energy to, to flow. They create a they create a container for this um, expression of gin. Good. So okay. So relax and let's just take a seat. And I'd like to see if there are any questions on this one because we covered a bunch of things there. I just want to clarify anything that. Any questions that people might have on this? Rick, you had something? I don't have a question, but my comment is 
I was doing it, I was having fun, but the moment I went back to the crown and to the, the whole the thing and pulled up on both, the rush of energy was palpable. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. It's good to, good to hear. Anybody else? Stan, you have some? You're, you're on mute, Stan. You're on mute. There. Okay. Uh, when we're doing it, basically, as when we're warming up and all that, we're going to be doing this. Uh, is it better to just work both legs or work one, then the other one, and then eventually get to bo uh, both legs? I leave it up to you. Like I said, there's many variations you can do, and you can stay on one leg, for instance, if, uh, if I want to. I want to do this. I want to flip to uh, yeah. okay, good. If I were to just stay on one leg, I can stay on my right leg and and just do just do this, mm -hmm. right? And I go to my left leg and just it's entirely on on that. So you get options. So you can improvise all that you want and explore explore the uh, the various ways to do that all the different combinations mm. back and forth you can do you know whatever okay richard very good thank you um very easy to quickly fall into old habits yes uh, once you start moving back and <laughs> forth i found myself you know uh, not on my substantial leg all the time when I was rotating. So that's this is a great exercise to keep you uh, grounded on your substantial leg. Right. Um, but it's very, I found it, you know, I found that I'm going to need a lot of practice to keep from falling <laughs> into those bad habits of, you know, flying back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, um it's often taught as something where you just kind of zone out and just become like part of this you know kind of a blissful kind of dance where you're just kind of going along and doing that and i want i would like you to <laughs> resist all impulses to do that as well because i i would like to bring the quality of mindfulness to every movement and the more mindfulness you can bring into the minutia of this but doing it from a super conscious state if you enter into it from a quality of feeling you'll go do it you'll move into that super conscious state and you'll be able to attune to so much of what's going on that uh, uh you'll be able to you don't want to miss any of that you don't want to miss any of that by just you know floating out into the ether somewhere so you want to get that Dennis, you had something. Yeah, I, my takeaway was is keeping your back straight and your hips level. And, and I noticed my, my bad habit is I hunch over. And I noticed there's kind of a paradox there because when you hunch over, I feel heavy and I keeps me there. But when you're straight, you feel lighter. And I was noticing <laughs> just my arms are just floating up there. So it's, it's, it's a habit I got to get out of is hunching over. Uh, for so many of us, it's uh, and and I think the key word there is habit because that's something where you know we work very hard to establish these habits, and uh, and now someone comes along and says, hey, you know, try it this other way, and and you know, you say, hey, better the devil I know, and uh, so it's you know to actually go and and consciously do this, slow it way down so that you're really oh. You're not just swinging your arms up. You know, another way that people teach it is to just, you're kind of turning the body and launching your arms from the centrifugal force of the body is to launch the arms. And that's a fun exercise too, but it's not this one. That there is a conscious reaching with the, with the arm. So I'm gonna stand up again here. So, you know, 
And that is if, if I'm doing it, right? And let's say I'm, I'm, I'm turning and I can stop this at any point in the process, the, 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 right? You can break this down so that you can feel where you are and feel if you are indeed in central equilibrium, if your pelvis is level, if you're reaching with your clavicular or not, if your chest is open, etc. So that you know, you get this, uh, you can get this slow motion kind of thing going there and really feel into it and say, oh, you know, where am I? You can check, you know, oh, if I'm like this or, you know, kind of crooked in some way, or if I'm reaching with my my shoulders pushing up with my shoulders rather than reaching with my wrists. So these are all things that, that can be done. That's by slowing it down rather than going into a trance on it, you ah, you bring this mindfulness to every every aspect of it. And it really brings you, locks you into the present moment. Cool. Anybody else? Gallery. Valerie. Yes, I'm one that is guilty of not only doing it, but teaching it as the turn is this, it's the centrifugal force that sends the arms up. So it's not that, at least I haven't been, you know, doing the whole shoulder thing, but uh, yes, this definitely brought a whole new perspective into it. Of, you know, I had to keep with each movement, you know, feel each wrist and then feel the elbows drawing it down and then the wrist rising up. So eh, not the old habit, not the old habit at all. And what you're teaching, what I also taught for many years, you know, is not wrong. It's better what, than what they had before. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. But if this is a better mousetrap, then, you know, then you use it, you know, that because uh, it's, uh, you know, because because it works. And it it also is in accord with the other other stuff we're doing. It's another way of of training these many things and and to be able to get it so that you know your body just likes it that way and it doesn't go back into bad habits because it's because uh, that's familiar it says no no we're gonna do this other thing because it feels good because i don't like the, the pain in my shoulders so i'm going to ah be able to open that up and just allow that that to, to flow and I like to breathe better. And I like, you know, the sense of fluidity in my emotions rather than uh, than the kind of halting, crunching, scrunching kind of movement. So, yeah, Nick. Yeah, I, I, I know we're really focusing on the shoulders here, but uh, for me in this exercise, one of the things that's really important is to first, cultivate that feeling you mentioned of always going down. I find that when I get that with students, it changes the whole way everything else moves. Right. And, and they're more able to, to do it right. Yes. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's like song, 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 more song. And for a change of pace, more song. You know, it's like, <laughs> just keep, keep it going. And, uh, and if you're pushing away from the earth, that's not that's not sung. That's that's something else. And you know, not to say it's wrong. There are people perfectly, you know, fabulous martial artists who do it that way. And and God bless them. That's that's what they're teaching, and that's that's the way they want to go. But for what I want to bring to the table, sung, 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 more sung is is the way to go. And so thank you for that. That uh, I, I agree with you uh, entirely on that. Cool. Um, 